Do you want to grow in dreams? This is one of God's major ways that He speaks. Stay tuned as we share biblical and personal experiences that have dramatically affected our lives. And those who have insight will shine like the glow of the expanse of heaven. And those who lead the many to righteousness like the stars forever and ever. Join us now for an episode of Seeking Insight with James and Rachel. Hey, welcome to Seeking Insight. This has been a dream of my lifetime to be able to come into your home for such a time as this. A theme verse for this broadcast is Daniel chapter 12, verse 3, where it reads, Those who have insight will shine brightly like the brightness of the expanse of heaven, and those who lead the many to righteousness like the stars forever and ever. And what is this first episode about? Rachel. Yeah, today um, we are going to be talking about dreams. We're talking about our master dream weaver, which is pretty cool because um, I grew up having dreams. I grew up in your household. I am yep. your daughter. Yep. <laughs> For all of those who don't know, I'm Rachel Tucker. This is my dad, James Gall. And um, we are, we've had a culture of yep. dreaming. And I mean, in bre at breakfast. Yeah. I would ask the question with four kids, I would say, did anybody have a dream last night? Yeah. So it was a normal, supernatural, natural family lifestyle culture to have dream language. Yeah. It's been, it's been a great thing. And even in my own family now, because I have three little kids, uh -huh. we're developing that as a culture in our family. Yeah. In the morning, we'll ask our kids, you know, what did you dream about? Yeah. And it's a great conversation. So we're excited to have that conversation with you guys today on the Master Dream Weaver. Yeah. And so a theme verse then for this first episode, <laughs> do you know how excited I am? <laughs> I really am about doing this generationally and getting to do and share this with you. So not in only is Daniel 12, 3, the overarching for this entire television series with you, because guess what? God wants you to be a bright and shining light. Yeah. But there is never no contest when it's dark in a room, all you got to do is flip the switch. Yeah. If the house is wired, all you got to do is enter the room and flip the switch and light always overcomes darkness. And one of the most outstanding most common, and it seems, when I said most common, that doesn't mean it's to be overly familiar, but one of the most consistent ways that God has spoken in His Word mm -hmm. to His people is through dreams. That's why I have referenced it as dream language. So let me give you a theme verse then for this first episode. It comes from Job, from Job chapter 33, verse 14 to 16, it reads, For God may speak in one way or in another, mm -hmm. yet man does not perceive it, but in a dream, in a vision of the night, when deep sleep falls upon a man while slumbering in their beds. Get this, because God wants man to hear his voice yeah. more than man even wants to hear it. 
verse 16, then he opens the ears of men mm. and he seals their instruction. So that's my theme verse. Yeah. So, hey, let's pray yeah. and then let's go ahead and dive in. Father, thank you for this time. And I'm asking that Jehovah Sneaky, mm -hmm. that you show up. Yeah. Even when man has turned his ear deaf once and turned it over again and said no twice, mm -hmm. that you who are persistent God would come yeah. knocking again thank you. and show up even in a night season and open our ears mm -hmm. and our hearts and speak. By the way, right now, Holy Spirit is already moving. Holy Spirit is already moving. Rachel, I feel it. I sense it. I hear it. I know it. Holy Spirit is already touching people's hearts. And you say, I'm not a dreamer. And I'm going to say, yes, you are. It's just gone dormant. And you just wait a little bit because dreams are real and the master dreamer is already at work in your life and what has been active in one season might have gone dormant, but he is alive and well and it, this dream life is going to be reawakened yeah. in your life. What do you think about that? Well, the thing that keeps standing out to me is in this verse yes. in Job, mm -hmm. it says that God will open up the ears of man. That's it. He's the one that opens up our ears. Yeah. And I love what you said too, that he wants us to hear his voice. Yes, he does. God wants yeah. us to yeah. encounter him, mm -hmm. to have a relationship yes. with him. And honestly, that's one of my favorite things. Mm -hmm. I mean, we were talking <laughs> the other night, yeah. I was telling you about just getting to know Jesus all over again yeah. uh -huh. as friend. Yeah. And that's one of the coolest things to me about yeah. Jesus uh -huh. is that even at night, he wants uh -huh. to um, speak to our hearts right. and bring relationship and um, encourage our spirits, mm -hmm. cast vision into our hearts. Yeah. I know you've had tons of yeah. dreams that have yes. radically transformed your life. That's I right. have yes. as well. And, and your mother had them profusely. And, and, you know, and that's something that I actually really relate to because yes. I have three little kids, yeah. obviously, you know, you have your grandpa to them. Yeah. Um, I'm Opa, by the way. Opa. And, you know, there's nights when you're, you don't have much sleep when you have a newborn yeah. and God is so gracious to meet you in that right. season. And I just want to say to yeah. whoever is watching this, that, you know, God is, he sees where you're at That's and right. he wants to encounter you and he That's wants right. to give you dreams. Yes. And we're actually going to share some of our yeah. life changing dreams that have radically yeah. affected where we've ended up. And I just, I can't wait to, yeah. to dive into that and share those with you, but stay tuned because we're about to do those. We will be back with more of Seeking Insight with James and Rachel. Go to jamesgall.com and godencounters.com to find out more about James Gall and his ministry. Read his latest articles. Grow in your relationship with God. Enjoy James Gall's poignant articles that will inspire you and give you deep insight from heaven itself. Enroll in his powerful classes. Grow in your relationship with God. Access hundreds of free audio and video messages ready to revitalize you and give you hope. You will have access on demand. Check out his resource store. Cultivate revelation in your walk of faith. These dynamic resources will equip you and light your spiritual fire. You will find that these dynamic resources will teach you how to walk in the supernatural every day. Go to jamesgall.com and godencounters.com to access James Gall's website. And now back to Seeking Insight. Hey guys, welcome back to Seeking Insight with James and Rachel. Um, we were just talking about how God wants us to hear His voice yeah. more than we actually want to hear it, which I think is an amazing revelation and something that kind of removes those barriers mm -hmm. where you know, we spend a lot of time toiling and saying, God, will you just speak to me? And he's like, I want you to hear my voice. Yes. You know, he really does. And um, 
I would love while we're on the subject of dreams yes. and hearing God's voice, I would love to hear a dream that has really affected your life. Yeah. Okay. I have a lot of them. Yeah, I know you do. <laughs> and so it's a little difficult. I have what I call a kind of an old fashioned Rolex. Yeah, like an you know, <laughs> you know, I have to go like, do, 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 and I go, oh, yeah. that one. Okay. And so last night we were rehearsing over this and one popped up yeah. in my thoughts and I want to make it personal yeah. because when it's personal, it means it's in the heart. Yeah. So I remember a time when you guys were pretty young and we lived in Kansas City and we've been living in Nashville for, you know, 25 years. And, uh, I thought that I was in a real special time called transition, <laughs> and I was in a time of transition. And now I understand that transition is a pretty normal time in life, but then I didn't have that understanding. And so I was in a very difficult time seeking God for, what do you want me to do? Mm -hmm. And it was a very critical crossroads time. What do we do? What decision do I make? This person wants me to do this. I had actually several different ministry offers and they seemed pretty conflicting, mm. rather conflicting. But I'm going to give a background on, on about dreams and partially, see, how do dreams even come? They're by grace. Mm -hmm. Everything is by grace. But the Bible also says in Isaiah and in the book of James, it says, draw near to God mm -hmm. and he will draw near to you. So I want to encourage such our watchers promise. and listeners. What? That's such a good promise. Well, yeah. To draw near to God. But it's an invitation. You. Yeah. Because you, you, you draw near to Him. That's my point. Yeah. It's an invitation. Mm -hmm. And I want to issue an invitation right now to you before I even tell my dream. Otherwise, this could come across a little arrogant, like, behold the dreamer. Uh-uh. This isn't about me. And this isn't about my family. This is about God yeah. is the master dreamer. Yeah. And he has dreams in his heart for every mm -hmm. single person. But then he issues out invitations. It's sort of like there's a wedding. Mm -hmm. And before the wedding happens, there's invitations that are even sent out called save the date. Yeah. Huh. And that's called draw near to God and I will draw near to you. So is it works performance or is it grace? It's called divine cooperation. It's a dance. We each have our cooperative part we play. Now, having said that, so as in this point in time, whereas like a major transition, I was really seeking God diligently in prayer and fasting. I was actually would fast two days every week for direction and I had a dream. And I teach in this dream language book about 10, 20 different top categories of dreams and things of this nature. And in this dream, I was like soaring. Which is one of the one of the top dreams, Fly, right? Like flying yeah. dream. That's a, that's a dream that I always want to have, and yeah. I don't find myself often oh, having Oh, I pray that you have one. Yeah. I pray that you have one. <laughs> Maybe I'll have one tonight. Yeah, these, are, these soaring dreams are exhilarating, but I better get to it, okay? And I was like soaring. I actually felt like I was a bird, an American kestrel, and you soar, but then they have this capacity to hover, hover in sight, and you just hover. And... I was then looking down. You see, in the book of John 17, it says that in the Father's house, there's many mansions. Well, I'm looking down then upon a mansion, mm -hmm. a flower garden. Well, I had an 
I had an aunt that I dearly loved. And then in my eighth grade, I wrote a theme, a paper. My most un, oh my gosh. <laughs> I wrote a paper about this aunt who never married. That was a very godly woman. My aunt, Grace May. And I wrote a paper about her, my most unforgettable character. Mm. And in this dream, I'm soaring, and I like, am hovering, and I look down, and there's her house in heaven, and there's this flower garden, this beautiful flower garden in heaven, and there's this woman, and she's bent over, and, and it's like a long distance, and then it's a macro vision, and it becomes a micro vision, and I knew it was her because as it became a macro to a micro vision, I saw her bent over working in her flower garden. And I could tell the color and the fabric of her dress. Uh -huh. And I knew it. Love how detailed that is. That detail. Yeah. And I knew the flowers because I helped her in her flower garden growing up. Mm -hmm. And then she bent up. She looked at me and she simply said, now this is symbolic, not literal. And she said, do mm. what matters. Hmm. All it was, was do <laughs> what matters. Yeah. I woke up out of that dream. It didn't give me the answer to join this ministry, move there geographically. Yeah. But I knew what to do. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Do what matters. Yeah. And I have a word for you right now. Make a decision. And make a decision out of core values. Make a decision out of eternal values. Yeah, that's good. Do what matters. That dream marked my life wow. to make the decision in transition to what would matter the most. Wow. I love that so much. I love that God cares about the detail yeah. to speak what would mean something personal to you right. that would personally affect you right. so that you could live out your calling. And it was in my dream language. It was in my personal alphabet. And we will do another yeah. show where we're going to talk yeah. about we each have a personal dream language. Yeah. And it was in my dream language using my, yeah. one of my most unforgettable characters. Mm -hmm. And God wants to speak to you. Yeah. And he wants you to hear his voice yeah. more than even you want to hear it. And when we come back, I'm going to share a dream that yeah. has affected my life in a dramatic way. And we can't wait. Yeah. So stay tuned and we're going to be right back. We will be back with more of Seeking Insight with James and Rachel. Call 1-877-200-1604 or log on to GodEncounters.com or JamesGall.com to get his powerful and life-changing resources. We have some specials just for you. A Dream Language Bundle. It includes the Dream Language Book, and it is about the prophetic power of dreams revelations, and the spirit of wisdom. I read a hundred books on dreams before I ever wrote this book. You're going to love it. So you have composed a complimentary tool to go along with this dream language book. Mm -hmm. And what's it called? Yeah, so I have put together this journal for you and for myself. I'm going to be using it. I'm very excited. It's called Reveal, my revelatory journal. Yeah. And it has a black linen cover with gold foil stamping on it. And I'm really excited about, you know, journaling my dreams and putting yeah. them in there. So there'll be something that I can go back and yeah. I can remember. What did God speak yeah. to See, me? See, journaling has been one of the big tools mm -hmm. that's been used in my life to be able to not just receive revelation, mm -hmm. but to be a good steward yeah. of revelation. So we have a dream language bundle for you. But yeah. guess what? 
there is also a free bonus mm -hmm. that comes with these well packaged and really, really inexpensive already price points. We have a free bonus. Mm -hmm. The best of dream language in a four CD message set that is actually free and it's a $20 value of four of my best messages that helped me write this book. It is a $56 value, but you can get this at this television show offer for only $38. Hey, this is a good deal to complement these shows or a gift for you or to give for someone else. Dream Language Bundle. To get these resources, call 1-877-200-1604 or log on to GodEncounters.com or JamesGall.com. And now back to Seeking Insight with James and Rachel. Hey, it has been so delightful to be with you. And now we're going to come back and guess what? Rachel is now going to share with you mm -hmm. in our God is the master dream weaver. And she's going to share personally with you about an interchange with God and with her brother, Tyler, mm -hmm. how he had a dream or was it that Rachel had a dream? Oh, I'm not going to answer that riddle. I'm going to let Rachel unfold it for you about how dream language affected her in a major transition in her life. Rachel, will you share? Yeah. So when I was 18 years old, I was living in New York and I was really, I'd always had this very strong conviction. I mean, you right. can testify, like yes. they, yeah. I just wanted to live a pure life right. unto God. Right. And still it's like, it's like the fabric of my DNA. It's right. just the way God really created me. But I was given this script in acting school uh -huh. and it was riddled with curse words. Right. And not even just like the like basic ones that like no. make it into the PG-13 movies. You know, it was, it was so far beyond what my personal conviction right. would allow me. I was really having a conflict in my heart. And I called you and I was like, Dad, mm. I'm struggling so much because I've been given this script and obviously I'm gonna be graded on this. I right. want to excel. What do you think? Do you think I should just like do it one time, mm. like get it over with, say all the words, just mm. meh, you know? totally not follow my conviction. And I didn't give you the answer that you were anticipating. No. You actually <laughs> you actually were asking me in, in a way so that I would learn uh, my own answer. I was helping you to learn how to make decisions versus giving you a black and white answer. Yeah. And so, you know, you, you helped me steer that and we ended in a good place. And I was like, oh, yeah. okay, I, I, I think I know what I'm going to do. The next day I am on the phone with my brother, Tyler, mm -hmm. which I love Tyler. Yeah, right. And he calls me, he goes, Rachel, I had a dream about you last night. Mm -hmm. You came home from oh. New York. And this is actually what's really cool is, is that amazing. God go gave a dream to someone else mm -hmm. that impacted my life. Right. So while I have personally had dreams that have dramatically affected my life, this is kind of cool because this is a dream someone else had. That's right. Um, because I actually trust that God speaks to people. That's right. And Tyler is someone that I have equity and relationship with, and I trust that God speaks to him and as well. Tyler's dreams are almost always literal. That's very true. And That's some true. people's dreams are almost always symbolic. Yep. But my son Tyler's dreams take them to the bank. Yes. They are almost always like, literal. Pay attention. Yep, always pay so attention. So I'm on the phone with him and he says, Rachel, you came back from New York and mm -hmm. in this dream and you were cursing. You were a changed person. You, you were not the same person. <laughs> you were cursing all the time. And I can, I remember where I was in my room looking out the window in Brooklyn Heights and I was on the phone with him and I said, Tyler, did you talk with dad? What, did you, did he tell you about our conversation we had? And he said, no, what do you mean? And I told him, I said, Tyler, I've been given the script and it has curse words all in it. And I just, re I've been really struggling. Do I do it? Do I not? And Something you had told me the day before was like, Rachel, the first time you move that that um, boundary. that boundary is going to be really easy to move it the next time. And I think it, it was such a pivotal point in my life because it was a fragile time mm -hmm. with, you know, 
mom being sick and with, you know, you were, you were actually battling cancer then as well. And I was 18, living in New York, hardly knew anybody in the city. And God knew in that moment I needed a word from him. He knew that I needed him to impact me. And so what was really cool is I was able to take that dream and I went to my teacher and I said, hey, listen, I'm not comfortable doing these curse words. And he uh, said it was okay and made an announcement in front of the entire class that I could change my script and said that anyone else if they wanted to, they could change their script too. So it was cool as while I stood up for my personal conviction, it opened up the door for other people right. to walk in their conviction as That's well. Right. And we want you to know this. God is the master dream weaver, mm -hmm. and he knows the intricacies yeah. of your personal life. And God cares about what you care about. Yeah. And he cared about an 18-year-old girl. <laughs> he cared about an 18-year-old girl. And he wants you to know he cares about you. And so we want you to know that he is dreaming for you. And he has a dream for your life. So we want you to know he wants you to hear his voice more than you yeah. want to hear it. Yeah, and I feel like there's even people that are watching this that, you know, there's dreams you've written down in your dream journal. Yeah. Even if you don't have a dream journal, we actually um, have made a dream journal for you guys. And um, if you want to get it, you can get it. But I wanted to let you know that there, there are people, and I actually have to do this. I got to go back to my old journals right. and I got to read what God has spoken to me in a previous season. And I want to encourage you, there are people, like just even for me to remember that dream and to relive yeah. the, the encounter yes. I had with God and that conviction that it's so important. There are people watching this that you've had life altering dreams. And I want to encourage you to look back, what are those dreams? Because God wants to reawaken that within your spirit. He wants sure. to reignite that in you. Amen. Hey, we want to bless you. Yeah. We want you to know that this God is not a God just of the Gall Tucker family. He's a God who's reaching out to you right now. Mm -hmm. He's a God who gives dreams to the believer and the unbeliever. Yeah. He's a God who's reaching out and touching you right yes. now. And he wants you to know whatever you care about, he cares about. Yeah. And he's awakening dreams in your life right now. And so we want to thank you for joining us today on Seeking Insight with James and Rachel, where together we're running after our friend, Jesus. God bless you.